Hello everyone. Today I wanted to continue on in my um, journey through the six comedies and proverbs, a series of films made by Eric Romer in the 1980s. This is the fifth film in the series. Um, this is an old uh, Fox Lorber DVD and uh, it's called Summer um, and it was originally released in the U.S. as Summer but its name, its far more common name is The Green Ray, and, and that's what it's known as today whenever in subsequent releases, streaming, and, um, and um, if it's released in movies, movie theaters. Um, and I've been, and, and this, this stars Marie Revere and as uh, Delphine. Um, she won, Marie Revere won the Best Actress at the Venice Film Festival and the film itself, The Green Ray, uh, won the Golden Lion at, at the Venice Film Festival. I've been the, talking about these comedies and proverbs as comedies of confusion, which is certainly true here as well, but even more, this is a study of loneliness. Um, uh, Delphine is, is, uh, has to decide how she's going to spend her summer vacation. She had plans, but her at the last minute, her girlfriend uh, calls and tells her that she's made other plans. She's on her own now. Uh, she's been, she, she's broken up with her boyfriend of a couple of years. Uh, she's basically dumped by him. <laughs> and uh, she ha hasn't gotten over that yet. Um, and, and she's wondering why people aren't noticing her worth. She, is there something actually wrong with her? Um, her friends are worried about her. They give her a session of kind of tough love, buck up, go out, party, have fun, you'll meet somebody. But Delphine doesn't see that as her identity. This isn't who she is. Uh, and, um, and, and, and of course, she's emotionally fraught. She gets invited to a, a farm out in the countryside uh, there she's interrogated because she's a vegetarian, sort of condescended to. She always has to defend herself. And she's wondering, why do I have to do this? Why am I so different from everybody else? Um, and, and when she's in the country, she takes a countryside, she takes a walk through a pasture land and, and, a, and a very uh, much a Romarian moment. In the, in the film, we hear distant rumbling. She looks up at the wind wishing through the treetops. She begins to cry. Um, wind wishing through the treetops has a, has a very deep, similar si significance in the last film, the, the next film in the series, Boyfriends and Girlfriends. She eventually, she winds up at Biarritz. Um, she meets a girl who is uninhibited, exactly unlike her. They're on the beach. Her friend, her friend, uh, this new friend that she meets is from Sweden. She goes topless, something that Delphine would never, never consider. Again, she's she is uh, urged to uh, pick up a couple guys. Uh, and they, you know, let's go partying with the idea of you know probably meaningless, <laughs> meaningless uh, 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 sexual experience, at least in Delphine's mind. Um, so it, it's kind of an existential uh, uh, dilemma that she faces in her estrangement from the world around her and, um, and, and, and in her wanderings uh, she's finding nothing and, and one of the antecedents to this, uh, to this movie is Robert R R Roberto Rossellini's uh, Stromboli, a film he made with uh, Ingrid Bergman where she similarly in a spiritual crisis wanders around Sicily but of course it is based on the movie is based on a novel The Green Ray that was written by Jules Verne and it's in reading over the the plot synopsis of the novel it, this is only vaguely similar but what it does take is the idea of The Green Ray and and uh, it, it is actually in the green ray is explained scientifically in the movie and it's a very uh, very amusing sequence and coincidentally they had a, a English uh, Jules Verne expert who was a friend of one of the crew and and she knew a professor who a retired professor 
uh, an old man with a long white beard. And this group, she and a few other people, including this professor, talk about the Green Ray. And uh, he explains it, and Delphine overhears this. And the supernatural, the mystic, it has already been introduced into the film in, in tarot cards that she just uh, stumbles across that in, her, in her journeys. Um, and, uh, and I'm not going to try to, to, to explain the Green Ray, except that it occurs when the sun goes down in certain weather conditions. The sun goes down right before it drops totally down. There's a flash of green light that can occur. And, and uh, mythically, that, is to, that indicates that a moment of, of uh, insight, a sort of moment of transcendence, where we insight into our own character, who we are, but also into, similarly, into the character of one's beloved. And, and, and Romer, all through his, his films, he, he is searching for that wondrous moment in, in ordinary life that sometimes, well, we always have to be prepared for it. We never know when exactly, when it's gonna occur exactly. And we have that, that moment in the Green Ray uh, in the movie. Um, and much of the Green Ray was improvised. Uh, it was, uh, Romer was, was stung by criticisms that he often got that his dialogue was unnatural, it was stilted, People spoke in sentences that were far too long that they would never speak in real life. Romer didn't believe that was true, and, and certainly in Romer's world, people talked. He lived in a world of conversation. So his films do reflect that, but the, he improvised this um, uh, prior to the, to the film, to the filming with, um, with Marie Revere, Beatrice Roman has a small part in the film, and some of his other Colette um, so they would improvise some, some scenes, uh, situations that Romer would set up for them. And then he did use some non-actors as well, and, and, and they, they came through, much to Romer surprise, it, it pretty much did work out very well. And, and he, this, uh, The Green Ray was also a, a film with, on a micro budget. He, was, he pared everything down to only the absolute essentials. A very small crew was all females. And, uh, and, and um, uh, it was kind of, he, he was trying, as he often did, he wanted to recapture the spirit of the new wave, you know, and that instead of getting larger and larger budgets and getting, uh, in working on a much much larger scale, he was he was going the opposite direction. He was paring it down. He sat on the film for a couple of years editing it. He didn't really know what he had. He wasn't sure it was really all that good. But then, like I say, when it came out, when he finally released it, um, it it won prizes and it was a commercial hit, very big commercial hit considering it it was nearly a no budget film, big critical hit as well. Um, uh, the, the, um, and many Roma fans believe this is perhaps his greatest artistic achievement. Jean-Luc Godard wrote him a letter praising the film and how much he, uh, how much he loved the film. Uh, so um, th that's Summer, or Summer, also known as the Green Ray. In fact, the Green Ray is the, is the name you'll, you'll mostly find it under today. This uh, Fox Lorber DVD is really, really bad, and I, it's hard to even believe that DVD could be this bad. So, but I did watch it on the uh, Criterion Channel. It's it's actually playing on the Criterion Channel. A much better, uh, a much better uh, uh, print, and a much more, much clearer. So, but I don't think it, I'm not even sure that that DVD is still available. Next up will be the final in this series, and this is. Boyfriends and Girlfriends. Um, this is one of my favorite Romer films, and I really do believe that Romer really hits his stride in the comedies and proverbs. And he, um, and they, they, I, I think they actually get better and better as they go along. And uh, to me, this is the, this is the best of the the three series that that uh, Romer directed in his career. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen to me this far. I really do appreciate it. Comments are welcome. Take care.